Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. My name is Rick Teto. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your chaplain here at the Springfield Masonic Community. Welcome if you are here in person or watching us online. I welcome you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. It is a beautiful day outside. Yes. So I'm glad you're here today. So we have a summer sermon series. And every week we are learning about Jesus and his 12 disciples. We have learned about three disciples. So you are one-fourth of the way through the sermon series. Good job. We have learned about Andrew, Peter, and Philip. Today we will learn about Nathaniel, who is also known as Bartholomew. So thank you again for being here. At this time, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Join me in the call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known God's deeds among the people. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, tell of all of God's wonderful works. Glory in God's holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and His strength, seek the Lord's presence continually. Our opening hymn this morning is Open Mine Eyes That I May See, page 66 in your hymn. Thank you. 
As we come to our time of prayer, I invite you to keep our friends and residents who are in the hospital in your prayers. Keep those families of those who have died in your prayers. And continue prayers for those who are struggling with their health. Continue to pray for healing and comfort. As we go before the Lord, I invite you into a time of silent prayer. And then I will lead us in a pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You know your own, and your own know you. We thank you for the disciple Nathaniel, who you called one of your own. Lord, forgive us when we say things that we regret. Have mercy on us when our actions do not bring glory to your name. Like Nathaniel, grant us the assurance of your everlasting love and acceptance. By the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our lives more and more into your image, so that people may see in us the grace of our Father in heaven. Like Nathaniel, help us to grow in our knowledge and love of you. We pray through your most precious and holy name. Amen. And as Jesus first taught his twelve disciples to pray, <coughs> Let us pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our special music is Mansion Over the Hilltop. Just wanted you to know that the words are printed on the back of your bulletin and you are invited to join along.
Mike. Thank you for playing. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, <coughs> Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The word synoptic means having the same point of view. Three of the Gospels have relatively the same point of view. These three are known as the synoptic Gospels. These are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In all three synoptic gospels, you can find a list of Jesus and his 12 disciples. One of the disciples on each of these lists is named Bartholomew. The gospel of John is not one of the synoptic gospels. The gospel of John emphasizes Jesus as the Son of God more than the other gospels. For example, last week, we learned about the seven signs and wonders of Jesus in the Gospel of John. Another difference is that the Gospel of John does not list the twelve disciples. In our scripture lesson today, the disciple Philip introduces his friend Nathaniel to Jesus. In every list of the Synoptic Gospels, Philip is paired with Bartholomew. In the Gospel of John, Philip is paired with Nathaniel. Good evidence and reasoning suggest that Bartholomew and Nathaniel are the same person. And since our scripture story uses the name Nathaniel, for our purposes, I will as well. So in the painting of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, each disciple reacts to Jesus' statement. Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. <coughs> the disciples are betrayed in a way that fits their personalities, according to da Vinci's interpretation. I hope this sermon series helps inspire your own interpretation of the story. Today we focus on Nathaniel, who, has, who is at the far left at the table. In my opinion, Nathaniel's expression is nearly the opposite of Jesus' expression in the painting. So, I'm going to have you take a look at the painting over there. I don't think I'm able to get to the painting. But in the center of the painting, who is the center figure in the painting? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. I'm going to talk about Jesus for a while. Okay, I haven't done that yet up until this point. I've been saving him for today because I want to contrast Jesus and Nathaniel. So Jesus is in the center of the table 
Jesus knows he is about to be betrayed, arrested, beaten, and crucified. Yet his expression remains calm, almost serene. He is seated at the table. His head is bowed down. Jesus appears accepting of God's will for his life. His left hand is open and facing upwards. His right hand is reaching toward the plate with both of his arms open wide. It's almost like he is welcoming all of his disciples to the table. And in what I think Da Vinci is implying is we all are welcome to the table. Now we contrast Jesus with Nathaniel. Nathaniel was at the far left. Now can you tell me, is Nathaniel seated or standing? Standing. Standing. He's one of the few in the painting who's actually standing up. So that's opposite of what Jesus is doing. Also, he is leaning forward on the table. If you look at the painting, his expression on his face is grim. So here you have Nathaniel. He's probably seated at the time. Jesus says, surely I tell you, one of you will betray me. He stands up, looks forward, and his face is grim. What emotion is Nathaniel portraying in the picture? Anger. What else? Unbelief. Unbelief. Yes. You can't believe. Who would betray you? Have you ever been in a meeting and somebody says something and somebody gets up and slams their hands down and looks forward? Have you ever been in one of those meetings? Yes. Ah, somebody says yes. Yes. Okay. That's how Nathaniel is. That's how he is right now. All of those emotions. He is defiant. It appears like he is saying, who would betray you? Which one of us would ever betray you? He demands justice and an explanation. Now let's review the order. We have Nathaniel on the far left. Next to him is James the, the, less, the lesser. Next to him is Andrew. Then Judas Iscariot. Next to him is Peter. Peter. Next to him is John. We have Jesus in the center. And then next to Jesus on Jesus' left is Thomas. James the Greater. And then Philip. Next to him is Matthew. Thaddeus. And on the far right is Simon the Zealot. So that's all. Today we're going to focus on Nathaniel. So two times Nathaniel was mentioned by name in the Gospel of John. In John chapter 1, Philip tells Nathaniel, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And when Nathan then Nathaniel makes a snarky and judgmental comment, Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Not the most gracious thing to say. <laughs> what would cause Nathaniel to make a comment like that? Possible explanations include a town rivalry. Nathaniel was from Cana, about four miles away. There was a wedding of Cana, that's in the Bible. Perhaps people thought poorly of Nazareth because there was a Roman army garrison located there. The Jews wanted their freedom from Roman occupation. Another explanation could be that the people of Nazareth had a poor reputation. Maybe they didn't observe their religion as faithfully as people from other cities. And lastly, what I believe is most likely the case here is that Nathaniel 
looks down upon the people of Nazareth. He saw them as inferior for whatever reason. We read the full extent of, the, of Nathaniel's bias and skepticism when he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The saving grace for Nathaniel is that he didn't let his prejudice prevent him from coming along with Philip when he invites him to come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, Jesus said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Jesus makes it clear that he knows Nathanael, because Nathanael replies, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael was shocked by this claim and wonders how Jesus could have known this about him. How this conversation unfolds between Jesus and Nathanael describes many things about our relationship with God. First, Jesus initiates the conversation. When Jesus sees Nathanael, Jesus takes the first step. He doesn't wait for Nathanael to come to him. Jesus always initiates love. God is always reaching out in love toward us, even when we are not reaching out to him in love. God takes the first step. Second, Jesus makes it known to Nathanael that he knows him. Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. <clears throat> Jesus knows Nathanael's heart. He knows his thoughts. Jesus knows his strengths, his weaknesses. Je Jesus even knows about that sarcastic little comment that he just made to Philip. Jesus knows Nathanael from under the fig tree before Philip even went to him. Jesus knew Nathanael before they ever met in person. The prophet Jeremiah writes, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Jesus knows each of us before we ever come to know him. And third, God loves and accepts us just as we are. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Here before him stands the Son of God from Nazareth. <coughs> Nathaniel knows he just put his foot in his mouth. Has anybody here ever said something you wish that you could take back? <laughs> Jesus does not reprimand Nathaniel for his comment. In fact, Jesus invites him into the fellowship. Nathaniel feels love and acceptance even after he insulted Jesus' hometown. Jesus is not going to hold this comment over him. Jesus is not going to nurse a grudge. Jesus is not going to be angry and demand that he take it back. Jesus welcomes Nathaniel and extends to him the grace of God. <coughs> The disciple Nathaniel reminds us that Jesus meets us right where we are. Jesus initiates the relationship. He starts the conversation. He is always reaching out to us. It is by great, the grace of God we, by, we are able to reach back to him. We are able to come and see. Jesus loves us just as we are, not by how we think we should be. Next, Nathaniel reminds us that Jesus knows us before we even know him. He knows our doubts, our pain, our weakness, our sin. Jesus knows it all. The psalmist says, where can I flee from your presence? There is nowhere that we can go that is beyond the grace of God. Praise be to God for always being present in our lives. And lastly, if you've ever wondered what love and acceptance look like in the family of God, look at how Jesus treats Nathaniel. 
When Nathanael questions Jesus, how did you know me? Jesus responds lovingly. And this is my paraphrase. Nathanael, I've had my eye on you for a very long time. <laughs> Nathanael is living proof of the song that we sang a few weeks ago. If his eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches me. <clears throat> this two-minute conversation with Jesus changes Nathaniel's life. Nathaniel professes, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And next comes the promise. Jesus says, do you believe me because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I shared that Nathaniel is mentioned by name twice in the Gospel of John. Jesus fulfills this promise at the end of the Gospel. Nathaniel is mentioned by name. Nathaniel is present when Jesus asks Simon Peter three times, Do you love me? And Peter replies three times, Yes, you know I love you, Lord. Nathaniel hears Peter say, or Nathaniel hears Jesus say to Peter, Feed my sheep. What could be greater than seeing heaven opened and angels above? Nathaniel saw Jesus after his resurrection. Witnessing the glory of God and the resurrection of Jesus Christ certainly qualifies. Nathaniel, you will see greater things than these. Nathaniel starts out as a snarky, opinionated, and judgmental person. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus initiates a conversation with him extends the grace of God, and promises to show him greater things than these. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus transforms Nathanael's heart and his life. Jesus wants to do the same thing for us. Jesus wants us to let our guard down. Jesus wants to help us put away preconceived notions about people. Jesus wants us to lay aside any judgmental attitudes and cynical views we may hold about the world. Nathaniel could not have done these things on his own. Nathaniel could only do these things by the grace of God. And Jesus transforms his life from the inside out. Going back to the painting of the Last Supper, Nathaniel is standing in defiance, in belief. How could anybody betray you, Lord? How dare anybody betray our Master? It wasn't long ago that Nathaniel was asking if anything good could come out of Nazareth. The best thing that ever happened in Nathaniel's life came out of Nazareth. Let's not be too quick to judge. May it be so. Amen. Our next song is Just As I Am, Without One Plea. It's in your song books, number 47. <laughs>
Spirit, I invite you to make an offering to God. Any, you can do that by placing your gifts in the basket in the back of the chapel. Your gifts benefit the pastoral ministries here at Springfield Masonic Community. So let us be in a time of prayer. Lord, thank you for accepting us just as we are, not as we wish we could be. Thank you for creating us in your image and helping us by your grace to fulfill that image. Lord, we ask your blessing on all the gifts that we give to you, but mostly we ask your blessing on our lives as a witness and testimony to your love. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to sing the doxology. <laughs>